we want now to welcome our guest speaker. We said uh, today we have international speaker. Can you clap to Jesus? Hallelujah. We have Dr. Thomas. Uh, Dr. Thomas is a great friend of ours. He uh, was introduced to me by Archbishop Dr. Addison Nganga. And uh, he told me, this man has preached to our church. Let him also come and minister to your church. Is it a good blessing? Can we clap for Archbishop? He's a great man. And he shared with us his friend. And now he is here. He is based in New York. But he come to this country, do ministry, then go to other country before going back. And today he is here. Ebu pigia yesu makofi. Hallelujah. Ebu inuwa mikono kwa kuchangamuka na kufrai. Ebu sema, Lord, thank you for blessing us, even with your servant. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. I want to bring him over here. And uh, I'm thinking, can I give him an interpreter? Ama muko sawa? Angabi wanasema tuwe na interpreter. Inuwa mkono. Angabi wanasema they are okay. Ebu inuwa mkono. Okay, thank you. Pigia ma, jipigia ma coffee. Then you do it in the other service. You do without interpreter. So you can remove this then. Thank you so much and God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much. Now with a rod of joy. Uh, for the next 45 minutes, let's get ready to be charged with the word of God. Lift both of your hands. Hallelujah. Sikiriza vida inasema. Wengine wanaangaria hata wa... Wengine wanaangaria hata wa siki bishops. Aya, inuwa mikono. Lift both of your hands. Aya, ni muzungu. Ataka kama yesu. Asa naona ingina wa meshaga. Haya, inua ni mikono. Nisaidia wa kulete mzungu yesu. Hallelujah. Haya, makovi mazore, Dr. Thomas. Hallelujah. 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 Keep clapping. Can you clap later? Hallelujah. As you bring him here. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To come and speak and deliver the word of God. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep clapping. Thank you so much. Hey, God bless you. Amen. These are what we call fathers. Amen. You don't hide them. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. Lift your hands up to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bwana sefiwe. Mungu ni mwema. Ubarikiwe. Hamjambo. Yeah. Give your neighbor a high five billion and say praise the Lord again. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I have so many things here. I have a lot of luggage because I'm loaded with the word of God. Now, God has big plans for us. Amen? And I don't just say that because I'm preaching. I know that because of his word. Do you have your Bibles or you have your phone with the Holy Bible app? It's okay. Hold it up. If you don't have the physical Bible, if you have your physical Bible, hold it up. If you have your phone, the app on the phone, on the smartphone, hello? Smartphone, it's smart. Praise the Lord. Say, I'm smart. I Say, I'm smart, so I need to have a smartphone. All right, what time is it? Okay, it's 10.05. Okay, I have until... All right, I got it. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute right now. Hold your Bible up. Hold your Bible up. Hold your Bible up. Hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. And say, Lord, this is your word unto me. Not to somebody else all the time, but to me, myself. 
You know, in Nairobi, you say, me, I, me, myself, I, me, I, me, I, me, I. Say, me, I, this is my word. Hello? Now, if you can get a hold of what's in here, your life will change. And you need to listen to men that are powerful and filled with the word of God, like your pastor here, like myself and others who are filled with the word of God. Don't listen to people that are just making a lot of sounds, but they don't have any substance. I'm using all the S words, sound, substance, smart. It's very good. System. God has a system on how he wants to bless us. But if we don't know it, how are we going to get it? If we don't know what it is, we can't have it. Say this with me. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands up right now. Father, I break everything that's causing anybody to stay back behind what you have ordained in Jesus' name. Those watching live and locally and around the world, get ready. For God is going to begin to release something so new and so powerful upon you. Furabashaka. Thank you, Lord. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips what's on your mind and heart for your people here and around the world. Thank you, Lord, for utterance in the Holy Ghost to say exactly what it is you want to say to your people. But as I said from the start, this is what God is saying to his people. So I want to give you a first challenge. Can you lift your hands and act like you're alive? Take a deep breath. Shake a little bit. Say amen. Come on. Say, I'm alive. Say, I'm full of life. Say, I'm fill, getting filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is exciting. He's never boring. He's never late. He's never lazy. He's never lacking. Hello. The Holy Spirit is filled. He has everything. Everything we need and want. And the more I walk with God, the more I feel that. I wake up in the morning, I look and I say, where's everything? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. God, you know, God is a let's go God. He says, let's go, you, let's go. Get up and move. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. You see how I can walk around and hold my Bible? Because I love this word. Put your Bible close to your chest and say, I love this word. I love this word. I believe this word. Last night, in the middle of the night, very late, I put on a very good preacher in America who's a very, very rich man. He's nearly a billionaire, I would say, U.S. dollars. And these are the kind of people I listen to. I don't listen to people that are just struggling and trying to figure things out. You got to listen to someone that has something more than you to help you get to where you're supposed to get to. Hello? And the words that he was speaking, though he was talking, he was making comments, he was just, he wasn't in a deep teaching, he was just making a lot of statements, but I feel the weight of them coming into me, and I was saying, ah, and I went to sleep on that. So I suggest to you, if you want to grow, find a way to get 30,000 shillings or whatever it costs and get a big screen TV. Hello? Put it somewhere, turn on the, get a Wi-Fi box. You can use a company here, costs, uh, high speed, costs about 5K a month. You know? Hello? And put that thing on and turn on the YouTube channel. Hello? And watch the Look Up TV. Hello? And watch my YouTube channel, Thomas Manton. And watch men that can teach you things you didn't know. Because the key to success is finding out what you didn't know that you can use right now. Hosea 4, 6 said, through knowledge the just will be delivered. Another place said that uh, the lack of knowledge destroys people. In the book of Proverbs, we see a scripture that said so powerfully that walk with the wise and you'll become wiser Amen. But the companion of fools will be destroyed. Number one assignment this morning. Are you ready? I came to help you. Are you getting blessed already? I, I came to help you. Lift your hands and wave at me. Come on now. You, 
You'll get anointed. The Lord wants us to grow out of where we've been to the place that he's taking us to. Number one assignment, identify your friends. You may want to write that down. Identify where your friends are, the environment they're in, who they are, what they are, what's in them. They, they could be a nice person. And we love everybody, right? I heard a man of God say <coughs> yesterday I was with him in a meeting, a conference in the city. We had a big conference in the city all the whole week. And uh, with Archbishop Harrisonaga, who, by the way, uh, published my great book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. Uh, you can get a copy of this. If you'd like to get this in your online, uh, we'll give you a phone number where you can text the word book to the number and you can get it. But you know what? Let me just give one announcement so you know where to find me. I think it's wrong for someone to appear and disappear and you don't even know who it was, what happened, why. Impact comes from contact. Hello? Hello? So first you have to look at your environment. So the environment of where you can get this book and other great materials and the links to our social media channels is on thomasmanton.com. My last name is M A N. T O N dot com, C O M. And uh, the first name is Thomas. You, you find that in the Bible, T H O M A S. John chapter 20, and Jesus saith unto Thomas, right? You say Thomas or Thomas. That's how you say here, right? Thomas. Manton, M A N T O N dot com. And everything's there. That's what I'll say about that. So Archbishop Harrisonanga, the great apostle here, <laughs> father of the land, wonderful, wonderful, beautiful man of God. Wow. He's just so great, you know. And uh, he decided by the Holy Ghost he wanted to print this book and publish it for me. And he even had his printer do it and he paid for it. Can you imagine? And he wrote the forward in here, three pages about the anointing and about the anointing we carry and how God used our, me and my ministry, the ministry to, to affect and change the nation of Kenya for the better over many years. And uh, you can get a copy of this book, okay? If I can give the phone number, uh, well, we'll do it later. But on the website, thomasmanton.com, you can see a place there where you can see this and you can get a hold of it. Also, I have some with me. I want to sign a copy for people, and I want to pray a prophetic prayer over you if you'll meet me at the book table. I think the book table will be outside uh, at the entrance, and you can see me there. I'll sign a copy for you and uh, uh, speak a blessing over your life. How many would like that? When God is speaking, you always want to go, yes. You know, hands up all the way. You see, I do it all the way. Let me do this one. Woo! Hallelujah. Even if you have stiff joints, you'll get healed by lifting your hands to God. Everybody do it right now. Say, Lord, I want to grow. I want to change. I want to be blessed. I want to move forward in my life. I don't want to stay where I am. One thing I found out about God, Bishop and Mama, he loves us too much to leave us the way we are. If God's not challenging you, he's not really walking with you. If God's not challenge you on a daily basis, you'll even feel pain inside of you. You'll feel discomfort. You'll feel disgust. You'll feel anger at times. You know, unless you get mad at something, you can't change it. As long as you say sour, how do you say sour, sour? Sour, sour? Ni sour? Uko sour? No, it's sometimes it's si sour. You know what that means? Am I right? Am I talking Swahili? Si sour means what? No good, right? Ni sour means me, I'm okay, right? Sour sour means it's cool, it's okay, right? Hello? 
<laughs> you didn't know I know some of these things. Huh? You didn't know that. Praise the Lord. <coughs> I said praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. God loves us too much to leave us the way we are. And, it, and if you're feeling stirred up and you feel unsatisfied and you feel discomforted and you feel grieved and irritated, sometimes that's good because it's going to provoke you to change things. Now, I want you to write this down. Where you're writing or whatever you're making notes in, in, even in your mind, identify my environment and my friends, okay? And then look at the ones that don't produce anything for you and your mission in life and what God has ordained for you. Look at those and say, I have to distance myself from these ones. Lift your hands. How many can think of somebody right now by the whole, lift your hand. If you, how many can think of somebody right now that's really not very good for you? But, <laughs> but they're near you. Guess what? When problems happen based on the thing, the wise walk with the wise and become wiser and better, but the companion of fools will be destroyed that's what Proverbs says. Solomon said that. And the destruction that's coming is not God's fault. It's our fault. Hello. We need, this is a day like never before. We need to take serious responsibility for our life and our destiny. Lift your hands again. See, I'm like the kingdom aerobics man. It's like an aerobics class, an exercise class. Lift your hands. Stand up. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Move, 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 move this thing. Say, I'm moving into purpose. Say, I'm moving out from where I've been. And I'm going to the place that I'm going to. <clears throat> to do that, you need to change things. How many can think of something that's not right in your life? Now, God will also challenge you in the realm of holiness. Hello? To clean up your life because sin is a destroyer. Let me tell you, sin is what brought about poverty and disease and issues and affliction. Sin. Poverty is not of God. Poverty and loss and despair and suffering and low-level living was never the plan of God for you or me. Let me tell you how it came. Through the father, Satan, and the mother, sin, they came together and they birthed something called destruction. How you're living, God will convict you and say, now, I want to bless you, but I have some conditions. I want to bless you, but I, I have some conditions. I have some things I need you to change. And when you do, you'll feel good. You'll feel excited. You'll feel clean. Let me give you something right now. Write this down. 1 John 1 and 9. Great scripture. 1 John 1, verse 9. It says, I confess my sin to you, whether it be, of course, of, I'll add this, whether it be, of course, of commission or omission. Omission means something I was supposed to do that I didn't do yet. Commission means it's something that I committed, something I did that was wrong in the eyes of God. And then God says, confess sin to me. And then we ask him through the prayer, 1 John 1 and 9, forgive me of all sin, Lord, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And the Lord said, I will do that. Lift your hands. Say it with me. Say, Lord, I confess sin to you. Do it right now. I don't need to wait till the end to have an altar call. I like to do it right now. We don't have a lot of time. I don't have time to have an altar call and pray over everybody, anoint you with oil. We'll do that another time. But I just want to speak the word. Let me tell you the greatest way miracles happen is not always by the laying on of hands. It's by the spoken word, the voice of the prophet. Hello? Say, Lord, I confess all sin to you this morning. 
Cleanse me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Anything I was supposed to do that I didn't do yet, to clean up my life, to put me in the purpose and plan and destiny that you have for me, I say it right now with my mouth, with a, with a sincere heart. And anything I did that was wrong in your eyes, whatever it was, everybody has some issue somewhere. Every human on the earth has some issue somewhere. You may not be like a wicked sinner, but there's something you might have done that's still not right. Lift your hands. Let's get free of that right now. Amen. Lift your hands again. Say, Lord, forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. And by the blood of Jesus, I'm cleansed from all unrighteousness right now in Jesus' mighty name. Give the Lord a hand clap right now. You see, what the Lord showed me about that, Bishop, is, is that people are walking around with their files polluted. They have corrupted files in their spirit, in their mind, in their life. They have their receptacles of problems from before that they never got resolved, so they can't step to the next place. If you want to go far in life in the realm of great success, you have to do a lot and a lot more than all the people around you. One thing you want to be sure of and know this, that you do not have to be like everybody else. Shake yourself and say, I'm shaking myself loose from everything around me. You don't have to be like everybody else. You don't have to be cultural. You don't have to do the same traditions. You don't, hey, mama, you don't have to do the same thing that everyone else did. Be different because God made you unique. He made you a special, beautiful creation of his to express his glory and the gifting he's put in you. And it's not like anybody else. He knows the hairs we have on our head. I'm blessed. The number of hairs on the head, he's counted them. How did he, he has a big job with me. I'm blessed. Someone say the prophet is blessed. My name is Thomas. Thomas. Say Thomas. He's very blessed. Yeah. People say, I want your, I love your hair. I want it. I said, you can't have it. It's my gift. Talk to the boss. Someone said, I'm very jealous, very jealousy, jealous, jealousy. I'm very jealousy. You look at you, you. Jealousy. I'm very jealousy. That's the way somebody said. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> I say, it's a gift from the boss. What can I say? I'm blessed. You pray and talk to him. Supernatural hair growth. I prophesy. Let it happen for people. Ain't, oh, you like this one. In, yeah, I know. In Jesus' name, receive it <coughs> from the one with the hair. Praise the Lord. I walk through the town. They go, Yesu, 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 everywhere. I like, leave me alone. Stop bothering me. Yeah, I know I look maybe like that, but he's my boss. I'm not him. Please, I'm Thomas. Please. Oh, Mzungu, Mzungu. No, that's not my name. I have a name. You talk to me, Mzungu, I look at you like, I'm not doing business with you. You're rude. Talk, ask me my name and say hello properly. Hello. Hallelujah. I, I saw somebody sent me an Instagram video. I was walking in the street and I had my bag and I did an African thing. I walked in the middle of the road. You know how y'all do that? I wonder where that comes from. Maybe in the old days you were scared that if you got too close to the bushes, someone might come out and grab you and pull you back. So people got in the middle of the road, even downtown in Nairobi, people walk in the middle of the street. They don't walk on the side. They walk right in the road. And the cars are coming, and you, you have to watch the people that you don't. Even the cows and the goats, they, the sheep, they just go in the road. They don't care, you know. They don't care. They just go anywhere they want to go. And the punda, you know the punda's in where? 
Hello, I was in Muea. You know where they grow the rice? In Muea, they have so many pundas, donkeys. They're everywhere. Hundreds, dozens of them. They have one. <laughs> You're driving, and here comes three of them. Whoo, right out in front of the car. I'm like, hey, watch out. My friend, another prophet, was driving, and three big full-grown zebras were running, and they were going to cross the road, and they crashed into his car. And they dented the car. They banged the car, but they didn't get hurt. They just kept going. I thought, this is a wild place. So anyway, maybe it's an African thing. I just did the African thing. As I'm walking in the road, <coughs> walking in the street, some, and there was traffic there. So some guy in his car took out his phone and started filming hmm? on Instagram. And he showed a clip of me walking like this, you know. I had a nice suit on. I was walking in the middle of the road. And here was the caption on the top of the Instagram post. I saw Jesus in town today. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, help us. I saw Jesus in town today. That's what it said. If I can help you in one thing, I'm obviously a very unique person. You've never seen anybody like me before, right? I'm not like anybody else. I'm happy about that. I'm from America. I'm from New York City. <clears throat> My father was the political boss of New York for 30 years. My father, Thomas, I'm Thomas IV because my father was Thomas. My grandfather was Thomas. My great-grandfather in Ireland was Thomas. So when it got to me, I thought, I like the number four, so let's use it. No one else used it, but I said, years ago, I said, I'm going to use that. Thomas Manton IV. Yeah, that's me. So my father was the man in the Congress in America, in the House of Representatives. He was the head of the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee. I guess you'd say here the Minister of Foreign Affairs, you know, but that's a certain position. But he, they have committees in the, in the Congress in America. So he, he was the one who caused the Northern Ireland peace deal to happen with England in Belfast, Ireland. And he brought, my father, Thomas, brought President Bill Clinton in 1994 to Belfast, Ireland on Air Force One, the presidential jet in America. My father brought the president, not the president brought my father. My father arranged everything. So he flew on the presidential jet, Air Force One in America, to Belfast, Ireland. And they signed, President Bill Clinton signed the uh, peace treaty that Northern Ireland, the, the Irish, they had the Irish Republican Army, the IRA. They would, they would cease doing terrorism and attacking the British, and, and the whole thing would stop. From that day, it stopped. Lift your hands. My father did that. So I come from a great heritage. I was an executive in New York. I was a bodybuilder. I was also a rock singer before I got saved. I was all of those things. And then the Lord came for me. My family, we were not Christians at all. Nobody on my father's side or my mother's side was ever born again that we knew about. But the Lord Jesus came to me, and I was getting some supplements, some protein things from my workout routine, and I went to a health food store, and the guy there was a Christian, and he started to witness to me, and I got very mad. I was like, are you kidding me? I came here for the stuff of my bodybuilding program. I didn't come to hear this. You tell me about the Lord. What are you, religious? What's wrong with you? Yeah? Sure enough, the Holy Spirit was in it, and some weeks later, I got saved at his house. I never went to a church. Never went to any church. The Lord came for me himself. And now my father's in heaven. Praise the Lord. My mother's in heaven. Praise the Lord. My father's parents are in heaven. I led them all to Jesus. My, my auntie has gotten saved. My mother's sister, she's online with me talking from America all the time. And she's healed of cancer. I prayed for her. Praise the Lord. 
My other relatives are getting saved. The whole family lines are getting saved. Lift your hands. God can use you to be the, the champion in your generation for everybody else around you. By the touch of God. So I found something that's better than being from a great line or a great heritage, even in America. I'm a global citizen in the 21st century. Praise the Lord. And I'm a, a prophet of God ordained by Jesus Christ for the 21st century church. That's way better than where I came from. It doesn't matter where you came from. You need to make your calling and election sure. And when Jesus comes to you, praise the Lord, something will happen to change everything from where you've been and take you to an entirely new place. I was supposed to take over my father's legacy. I was, gonna, I was going to law school in America. God interrupted the whole thing because he called me to be his prophet to the nations. Praise the Lord. I, my, my father's law firm, I was supposed to take the law firm. You know, Bishop, all of my father's protégés are all multimillionaires. They have government contracts. They have city contracts in New York. They have all what you call tenders here from the government. They were steeped in that so much that they couldn't do all the work, making millions and millions and millions of dollars. Lift your hands, but God has something even greater than that. Money is not the ultimate goal. Money is a servant to the will of God. Prosperity can be defined as this, having enough of God's supply to do the will of God. Write that down. Prosperity is for me to do the will of God. That's what it's for. That's why it comes. And that's why we need to have it. What, what the Bible calls provision. Jehovah Jireh, he's provided for himself. A ram in the thicket for Abraham. And um, nineteen eighty six in New York City. Ma brashalaha tolo sha in Kundai. I was in my house in New York. Horante shondalar. I feel the anointing fall in here. Horante shondalar sondan chalandere. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me in an open vision. My whole house disappeared where I was sitting. Everything disappeared. I saw the whole world. I saw the kingdoms in the spirit. I saw the cities. I saw future generations. I saw all kinds of things. I can't describe it. I don't have the time. It's a long uh, vision. But the Lord walked from, from the heavens and, in the spirit world and came to me. There were several angels behind him. And he came and stood in front of me. And I tried to stand up, but the presence of God was so strong, I couldn't get to my feet. I fell on my knees. Right there in my house, the Lord stood in front of me, and he said, he spoke to me, he said, my son Thomas, I am commissioning and ordaining you to be my prophet to the nations. And I had just gotten saved about three weeks prior, in August of 1986, so now this is the end of August, so now this is in the month of September, I began to have these open visions, and the Lord began to show me what his plan. Jesus Christ himself, in the vision, laid his hands on my head, and fire went all through me, and I fell down to the floor. When I got up, from that day, I began prophesying. I had just been saved. I had never been to a church. I had never been to a church. I had never been to Bible school. And, and God had me to create my own Bible school. My father bought a satellite dish, which in those days was very expensive. I think it was about $8,000 for when they first came out, the big 16-foot dish, and put it on my house. And 
I was able to beam in all the networks, TBN, I can't remember them all, all the different ones, and the, Bible, and, and the channels from Lester Sumrall and Kenneth Hagin and all the Bible teachers. And I sat in front of the television screen and I was writing notes and I was beginning to have my own Bible school. Right there, and God began to prepare me. I still had not gone to a church yet. And people said, well, now you got born again, now you should go to church. I thought, well... When I'm ready, you know, when God shows me, he's directed me. Hello? So from that day, it interrupted the, I'm trying to tell you something here, interrupted the cycle of my life from where I thought I was going to now the destiny that God has. Lift your hands. In this church today, I'll leave this deposit by the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, everybody. I'll leave this here, even after I've gone this afternoon, it will remain here, the presence of the Lord, that everybody, I prophesy over this house, uh, restoration, revival, yes, everybody that sets their foot in here will have a visitation of God for the next many days, months, let it continue, let it continue forever. I've, I've, had, I've heard testimonies back from apostles that when I was with them, the anointing fell for a certain thing in their church, 15 years later, it's still operating. It never left. I prophesy over this place that the people here will have an encounter with God that will interrupt the cycle of everything that they thought they were going to do that wasn't the plan of God. And God will touch them and visit them and speak to them personally. Maybe not through a prophet. Maybe not personal visitation. It could come from instruction from the pulpit. Of course, we're teaching here. We're preaching here. We're prophesying here. The leadership is so important because that's the mouthpiece of God. The bishop is the mouthpiece of God. His wife is the mouthpiece of God. The other ministers that speak here are the mouthpieces of God. But God can visit you and overshadow you himself by the Holy Ghost and show you your destiny and bring you into it. I'm prophesying here under the anointing. Pambo Shiko From today, your life will take on a new course. Let me give you a Bible for that. I don't have any business saying I'm a Bible man. I told you that already. I am a Bible man. You get any prophet coming around and they can't they can't show you something from here, that's not a good prophet. You say a bishop or an apostle, everybody's an apostle these days. I heard uh, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, my friend, he said something funny. He said, everybody's an apostle these days. I don't know what happened. He said, I think there's more apostles than people. <laughs> you have a church in your garage with three people and uh, half a microphone, and you're now an apostle. Are you kidding me? A real apostle is someone that's built something. People are prophesying to me these days about the apostolic. Even that I'll be made a bishop. This is just coming. But I've paid my dues, man. I've been around the world. God's used me to shake territories of the earth. I've, my feet have been on all six continents of the world. I've been to 32 countries now, but the pandemic stopped it. I was supposed to hit 40 to 42 countries already, but we're going to start again. And I'll tell you this right now, I don't mind saying it. God's going to give me a private jet in the, in the future days when I can hit city after city after city after city, quickly, many have prophesied this to me. But I'm not a novice. I'm not a joker. I've suffered for the gospel. I've walked in power around the world for many years. My feet have gone millions of millions. I'm a multi-million miler on all six continents of the world. I've flown to South America, I've flown to Australia, I've flown to Southeast Asia, I've flown across the nations of Africa, I've gone across all of Europe, America, the islands of the sea in the Far East. Lift your hands, praise the Lord. But I don't take any title unto myself. You call me doctor, that's okay, because I'm a doctor of divinity, I have that. Hmm? You call me prophet, that's wonderful, because that's my function. It's not a title to make myself look big. It's what I do. So if you want to be an apostle, ho, oh, let the proof and the marks of the apostle be upon you. What have you done? Bishop, I would never, I would never. You know, the scripture says, the scripture says when a man desires the office of a bishop, 
he desires a good thing, but he has these other qualifications. Husband of one wife, not two, not five. Hello? Hello? A man not greedy or corrupt. That disqualifies many bishops. Lift your hands. I don't want to get into it too much. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you, maybe you can get what I'm saying. People that are corrupt and greedy, they disqualify themselves. How many know God wants us to have a holy life? Lift your hands. Holy life. Holiness means oneness. The name, the name, the word holy means one. Holy unto the Lord means I'm one with him. We're together. We're not another. I'm in him, hidden with Christ in God. I'm hidden in Christ, once wrapped, then in God, twice. I'm in his presence. Psalm 91 said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High and dwells under the shadow of the Almighty shall say to the Lord, He's my refuge, my strength, my strength. No evil shall be able to attack me or hit me. Why? And I asked the Lord, what is the secret place? It's not just a prayer room that we have, although that's good. But it, to me, it's being close to God. Lift your hands. In his presence, in his hand. Everything he has is mine. Everything I have is his. Let's do that right now. This is amazing how the Holy Ghost has taken me. I have about three, four minutes. So I'm going to close and we'll pick this up in the next service and go into something else. But lift, lift your hands right now. There's a visitation. There's a consecration. It's a celebration of my life to walk with God. Can you feel the anointing here? The Holy Ghost is falling. Lift your hands right now, everybody, and just pray in the Spirit. Close your eyes. Say, Father, ordain me, consecrate me to your will in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you this. Thank you for saying that. Amen. Now, let me tell you this. You don't have to look for a position. The position will look for you. You don't have to look for a blessing. The blessing will look for you. I don't look for money. Money looks for me. I don't look for things and connections. They look for me. I have so much favor in these areas that I can't do all that I'm asked to do. So many invitations, thousands literally of invitations I have to preach all over the planet. I can't answer. In one particular country, I've received over probably like over 1,000 invitations to speak in that country, and I've never gone there yet. But I believe in the future days, that's one of the countries I'll visit. Lift your hands. There's too much work. There's too much blessing. There's too much favor. There's too much to get done. There's too much. When there's too much of God in you, more than the normal, now you're going to see the favor. Don't look to exalt yourself. Let God exalt you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up. Pama, shalala. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Shalom, bran, kune. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Father, let this same anointing remain here from today. Dr. Uh, T.A. Rayla Kolela from South Africa was just here two weeks ago. He told the testimony publicly before. When, when I was in his church, when we preached together in South Africa, and he told it, I was, I was shocked, I was surprised. I didn't know he would do that. And he told the story of how I went to his church, and he said he didn't have, he didn't have uh, you know, he wasn't very prepared for the whole thing. And he said the power of God fell in the last service we did and remained there till today. Lift your hands. And that was 15 years ago. He said, I never had the anointing to raise money. It wasn't me. I couldn't do it. I didn't know how to ask people for money. I didn't know how to raise money. I didn't know how to do it. But you came anointed by the Spirit and said, someone's going to give 10,000 rand. Someone else is going to give. Many came. He, sh he shook his head. He said, these people, I know them. How are they going to do this? And he said, other people to give 5,000 rands. 1,000, 2,000. The altar was filled with people. 
I went to another church in uh, um, Soweto, biggest church there, Calvary, I think it's called. And like 100 people came to the altar to sow a certain amount I, with no effort, you know, no effort. I didn't plan it. It just happened. And he said, now, this happened in his church that night, and he said, until today. He told the people. It's on the video. You could see the clip on my YouTube channel, and it was also on Faith TV. Archbishop Harrison Nanga hosted the conference. Thousands of people in attendance. Thousands of people watching online. And he told the story how till today, like, people just come to give while he's preaching. It's, it's, it's effortless. That's a visitation from God. Now, I say that to say this. The same way that happens is the way that God will promote you and bring the miraculous into your life. Just lift your hands and pray right now. The miraculous. This is what you need. You don't need the hand of a man. Remember John chapter 5, the man at the pool of Bethesda. Remember. He said, I have no man to help me. Jesus said, no, no, this is not right. This is not right. You need, he said, now I'm here. And he said, take up your bed and walk and walk. And the man walked. Who did he need? Who did he need? Man, even the angels, he couldn't catch them. Because when the angel came to the pool of Bethesda on the five porches of Solomon in Jerusalem, I've been there myself. I have photographs of the place of me there. And also, I led a Holy Ghost service in the upper room, the actual upper room where the Holy Spirit came. I was, in, I was appointed by the Israeli tour host, and he looked at me and he said, you are going to lead the service in the upper room. And how did he know that? And the presence of God came and filled the place. Now, at that place, I saw it with my own eyes, and I stood there myself with my own feet, where the angel was there and troubled the water, touched the water, and whoever would jump in would get healed. He never, this man lay there for 38 years. And he never could get in quick enough. Somebody else always beat him. But then Jesus came to him. Lift your hands. <laughs> Jesus came. <laughs> Do you think that man was the only special one? Do you think he was the only special one? Or is it also me? If it's also me, is it also you? Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. It's you. Third John 2, I'm closing with this for, the, for this session. The Lord said, I want you to prosper, John said, and be in good health even as your soul prospers. But he was talking to a man called Gaius. But is Gaius the only guy or is it also me? So years ago, I saw a space there between the two chapters, and the Lord said, write your name there, son, because this promise is for you, and I've been preaching it all over the world all these years. 3 John 2, write that down. I want you to meditate on that. He said, above everything, I want you to prosper. Why? Because you need money in this world. You need help in this world. Everything costs. Everything takes resources. Everything, everything, everything. And God is very concerned about you having it. Hallelujah. So I wrote my name there. Beloved, and I wrote Thomas Manton IV. I wish King James. I pray New King James. I desire New International Version. Above everything else that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Now, if you don't have any money, you can have good health. You can't go anywhere. If you have a lot of money and you don't have good health, you can't go anywhere. Hello? You're stuck because you're sick. Right? And as your soul prospers, if your mind is messed up, and even your emotions and all of that, how, how are you going to progress in life? So lay your hands on your head right now. i got to drop this mic. I'm walking off the platform. My time is... Hey, man, praise the Lord. You know when they're on the America's Got Talent? Thank you. That's my time. Well, I want to say thank you. That's my time. Okay. <laughs> and then they, usually they only have two minutes to do their performance. Praise the Lord. Thank God I had 45. Okay. I arrived this morning very early, like 8 o'clock, 8, 8 o'clock, and I was outside. 
And the Lord spoke to me, and he told me, son, speak for 45 minutes. And the, and the bishop walked in. He said, okay, you do 45 minutes. I said, thank you. The Lord's already told me. All right? So I think I'm right on the nose right now. Let me go. Lift your hands right now. Lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, you want me to prosper and to be in good health even as my soul prospers? I receive it from you for the commission that I have from you in my life to do everything you've ordained. I will be your servant in a new way from today. I release this visitation by the Holy Ghost upon you that you'll walk in the ways of God and produce the miraculous in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you. I'll talk to you next. Be blessed. I love you. Bishop. Thank you. A good, beautiful hand clap. Hallelujah for the servant of the Lord. That's beautiful. That's lovely. That's wonderful. Amen. Thank you. We long to hear more in the third service. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have one more pastor help him to receive? Uh, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Makovi Mazuri. Asante Sana. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate. Thank you, uh, Dr. Thomas, for uh, prophet of God for speaking to us. And uh, would you like him to come again? And do you, should we have him in the burning fire conference? How many, how many are saying that we should have him? Amen. Thank you. People are saying you should come again. Can you lift a hand and see? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In August, the burning fire conference. I will talk to him and give him the date. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. We bless the Lord and we give him glory. Hallelujah.